coming up on the next episode. Hi, good day, YouTube. Here with you today to build a kit. This would be an episode of Kit Building with Doug. Uh, on the bench before you see uh, the IC station, as, as you can see there, plain, plainly written on the screen, uh, IC station radio FM radio kit item number is GY19367. And that is what we are going to start building today. This is going to be part one. Um, this is not a complicated kit, but it is the way I'm doing it. I want to get make sure I put all the post all the steps, and that you can kind of follow along with the build. Now, if you guys uh, are a follower of uh, the Radio Shop Buddy over there, you'll notice on Saturday that he did this kit, uh, same kit, and uh, he did an excellent job as usual. Buddy's a uh, uh, Good, good guy as far as electronics is concerned, and well, good guy across the board, I guess. Uh, but anyway, uh, like I say, this is uh, what we are, are going to be doing today, and uh, so you guys uh, stay tuned for that, and we will get started very shortly. All right, for this part of the video, what we're doing is installing the uh, resistors into the board or onto the board, however you'd like to look at that. And if we look at our... Um, Instructions that was provided by IC Station, the PDF, says step one, install two pieces 10 ohm metal film resistor at R7 and R8. And if we look here, I believe that's R8 there and R7 is over here, I do believe. Yes, right there. So those two have been installed. And when I say installed, they haven't been soldered yet, but they are in board. So the next one is the uh, install one pieces of 100 ohm at R1. Now if we look at, uh, whoops, sorry. I've got to get my other glasses on here because after using those for a little while and then going back to my regular reading glasses, it sucks. <laughs> I don't see as good. Um, <laughs> at R1. So uh, let's see where we left off. R1 right there, I think. Let me double check. Uh, that may be R4. I can't tell. No, it's up here. R1. There it is right there. R1. Okay, there's R1 right there. That's in. Let's scroll on down to our next... Uh, and I will be flashing these up on the screen as well so that you can follow along with the instructions as provided. Step 3. Install two pieces, 330 ohm. Um, 330 ohm metal film resistors R4 and R10 and so if we look over here this is the one I thought was the R1 but it's R4 here and R10 is right here so there's those two right there those are installed on the board they haven't been soldered yet but they are installed so there's that now step 4 says install one piece 560 ohm metal film resistor at, at uh, R2 and if we look up here, R2 is right here, and that's where that one is installed. And that one is good to go. So let's go on down to the next. All right, next one says, step five, install three pieces of 10K ohm. Now, you really have to pay a lot of attention to the, the uh, <laughs> what they say as far as the color uh, uh, code of it. It says brown, black, black, red, brown. Now, <laughs> I, I I still have I still struggle to to figure out their codes with these, but what I generally do is take my meter and and you know confirm which is which, and I have done so with this. Now this is supposed to go into R5, R6. R5 is right here, and you can see that one's there. R6 is here. That one is there, and uh, the last one is R9 which is down here, R9, and that one is there. I don't know how well you can see the colors on those, but they, um, that looks to me like, well, brown, black, black, red, brown, I think is what it says. 
brown, black, black, red. Yeah, that's what it says. Okay, that's exactly what it is, and they are 10K. So, uh, we'll move on down to the next one. 150K uh, ohm uh, metal film resistor. This is step six. And let's see what we, we got here. Um, at R... No, that couldn't be R1. We've already put R1 in. Oh, that's not going to work. 150K at R1. That's what it says, but that is not R1. At R3. Okay, that's a that's a, a miss uh, miss print on the instructions, obviously, because this is marked what it's supposed to be 150K underneath that, and it is R3. So there you can see. Follow the uh, the pictorial mo more than the text on these. I think is the the key, at least on this one. So that's that. Now I believe there was a couple of 330 something, and let me double check. There it is. Uh, step three. If you look at step three again, I'll flash that up. You can see in the color code again. This is a a, a bad. I don't know if it's just a uh, a translation problem or what, but you can clearly see the color on the resistor is, is R300 or uh, orange, orange, black, black, brown, and that's very clear. Now they've got it listed as brown, brown, black, black, brown. That's obviously not because orange is three, we all know that from the color codes. So, and that's exactly what I had in there. If I didn't make that clear, I thought I did. Oh yeah, there they are right there, both those. So I just wanted to kind of show you on stuff like that where, where it's kind of a misnomer where, I, like I say, it may be just a, a translation problem uh, or something like that. I don't know, maybe they consider orange brown. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, so again, just kind of pay attention to where, where the uh, pictorial shows to put them at and you can look at the board and you can see the numbers on them that uh, correspond to the value of the transistor. If we looked under here where it says R10, it would say 330 ohm or 330 and that would also say 330. In fact, it did when I put them in there. So just you double check these things a little bit. And it's, it's the same way with any kit that you build. There's always room for... Uh, Oh, you know, problems with the uh, um, the uh, documentation. Uh, I know that from writing uh, documentation on building the BDST. Um, that's why you have it, you have it uh, proofread as many times as you can, and and have somebody go over it and you know that's built a kit or whatever, and you can see that uh, it is what it is. So, all right, next up here is going to be for me to. Uh, uh, solder these in and once I do that we'll come back and start on the next bunch which is I believe the little disc ceramic capacitor so all right be back also I wanted to point out real quick that uh, I did have some left over uh, of the resistors and you can see them here four of them and that's okay I mean as long as you've got too many it's better than not having enough <laughs> so like I said, we just kind of put those out of the, out of the way. I don't I don't think there's any place else that needs resistors. Uh, I checked the uh, again. I checked the uh, master list of the components, and ten was all that was called out. And ten is what I have installed on the board. So these four are obviously extras. So that's a good thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing. So all right, well I'm back again. I, like I said, I've got these all soldered and snipped. And everything is soldered as it should be. I noticed a little bit of it. This is a film of some kind. I don't know. It just needs to be cleaned off. I need some alcohol to clean that off. Not really sure why it's on there, but it's just probably part of the manufacturing process or something like that. So, not a big deal. All the, uh, the uh, solder points look clean. No bridges. And I think I'm happy with that. That's probably the closest I came, but their hole is, is still out there. And these are joined together. So, anywho, that's that. So, all right, be back in a bit. All right, back again. I have the uh, ceramic capacitors all installed. We'll go over them here one at a time, starting with step seven. Install one piece of two picofarad ceramic cap at C10. Now, that is over here. If we look at the uh, uh, let's see if I can see it. C10 right there. It goes kind of a diagonal shape right there. That's it one right there. 
and the next one says four pieces of 30 pika period at three c3 through c6 and those are all up here 30 um, 30 30 and 30 all those are installed right there so that's those let's move on down to our next steps that was step eight by the way all well, step nine says install one piece of 82 pika period ceramic caster ca uh, cat <laughs> capacitor i'll get it here in a minute uh at c7 and that would be right over here 82 pika period as you can see i think on the screen maybe i don't know maybe not uh, that was just one for that one. Step 10, it says one piece of 0 .02, 202 ceramic capacitors at C14. Now that one is down here. If we look carefully right there, you can see it, C14202, right there. So that's them. Let's go on down to the next step. Step 11 says install two pieces of 0.47 microfarad 472 ceramic capacitors at C11 and C12. That would be C12 in there and C11 right there. So that's those two. Those are in. You know, I, one of the reasons I do it this way is because it kind of verifies that I have got at least something in there. It may not be right, but I've got it in there. And I think it, you know, I paid pretty close attention to doing it. So step 12 is try install five pieces of 0.1 microfarad, 104 ceramic capacitors, C8, C9, C13, C15, and C17. Now we start over here at this one here. That's C8. I believe this is C9 down here. Right there. And uh, over here is C13 and C12. And down here is C, I can't even read it, 15 looks like, and C17 is over here. So there you go. Those are all of the uh, ceramic capacitors installed. Now I have a few more left over, obviously. Uh, there are other ones that have to be installed, but the next step, as you can see, is step 13, which is putting in the IC. Um, so we're going to go ahead and solder up these first and then we'll come back and I'll show you that they have been soldered in and we'll go from there. Alright, well there you can see I have all of the um, soldering done on the ceramic caps. Uh, everything seems to be in order. Again, no bridges. There are a couple of bridges, but they are intentional bridges. Uh, let's see, I can't find one. Right. Oh, there's one right there. These two are close together. Also, I think this, yeah, this one up here is an intentional bridge. Um, so, like I said, these, uh, the rest of them are all soldered in place and ready to go. And I'm going to take a little break right here and uh, come back with the, uh, again, starting with the uh, chip install, the IC1 and IC2, um, I think. Yeah, okay. Both of those, yeah. Step 13 and step 14. Uh, so we'll be back in just a second. So join us then. All right, well, there you can see we have step 13 and 14 complete. We have the IC1 and IC2 installed and actually soldered in. So there you go. That's a quick look at that. It wasn't too hard. I was going to, I thought about putting some uh, sockets in for that, but I thought that's the last thing. I thought, well, no, just go ahead and it's all right like it is, I think. So, all right, we're going to go to the next step and see what we got to do. All right, step 15 and 16 is done. Now we have Q1, which is this uh, S9018 here, and Q2, which is the S8550 here. Both, as you can see, soldered in there and there. That is a bridge there. It's a design bridge, I guess is what you would call it. But uh, anyway, those are both in now, and we'll proceed on to the next step. I've got the uh, step 17 and 18 done now. I have step 17, which was the 5.5 turn coil here. 
and I have yet to, it, it says in a direction you need to spread the uh, uh, coils apart a little bit and it shows a picture of it and I'm going to do that but I haven't done it yet as of yet. The other ones, the uh, two 6.5 turns are installed here and here as in the, as per the directions I should say. And uh, So those are done and I will show you after I get this spread open a little bit sh show you that it matches the picture pretty good. Alright, there you can see as promised there is what it looks like as, with a close up. And uh, I think that's going to do just fine. I don't think there's a problem with that. If if it needs to be adjusted, I can adjust it again. But you can see it's pretty close to the picture. If you look at the inset on the picture, I think that'll do it. So we're going to call it good anyway. So on to the next step. All right, we have... Uh, the uh, pin or step uh, 19 and 20 done now as uh, top one is L10.7A ceramic filter CF1 that is this one right here and the other one is here J107C 10.7C it's discriminator it's CF2 and that's what that is they are both soldered in as you can see very nicely very nice on to the next step. All right, we're back for step 21 and 22. Uh, step 21 is install a 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor here at uh, C16. And I uh, got that in there correctly. There's the positive lead on top. Bottom is the negative. Now the other uh, ones are the, uh, the bigger 470. Uh, UF uh, electrolytics and they go in between C18, C19, and C20 and those are installed here C18, C19, and C20 so those are all, all installed the correct way and that's good so <laughs> gonna move on to the next step alright so step 23 and 24 are to install the uh, earphone, headphone, uh, aux audio output, whatever you want to call it, socket here. That's been done, and this is the uh, volume pot, 50k ohm, and that's installed at RV, and they both are uh, soldered. And I'm not going to show you because, I, as you can see, I'm at the end of my holding power here on this because of putting those in. I don't have a, a, a lip anymore to go with. I guess I could probably run it down the other way, but I think I'll just do it like this for now and see how, what happens. Let's go on to the next step and see what happens. Alright, step 25 is to install the uh, tuning capacitor here. Uh, you'll note on the instructions they give you a larger and a smaller hole to insert the, so you insert this correctly, which it's, it's observed uh, you know, on the there is a, it is a larger I think on this side, smaller on this side, I think is the way it is. But you'll see, like I said, the tabs on this side are smaller than the tab on this side, so you'll be able to see pretty clearly that uh, which way that goes. So shouldn't be a problem. On to the next step we go. All right. Well, we moved on to step 26 and 27. 26 is installing the uh, on-off switch right here. Six pins. I uh, didn't say any about anything about which way it went in, so I just installed it that way. <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. Uh, the other one is to put the knob on here, and it says to use the smallest screw, and that's the smallest screw I could find. And it is installed. So on to the next step. All right, step 28 is to connect the two red and black wires to the B plus and B minus ports and then you can see the black is going to B plus and the uh, I'm sorry the red is going to B plus and the black is going to B minus that's the way it's supposed to be done so they're they are ready to go now it also says that you can you can do this in the last step if you want so I, ch I chose to go ahead and do it you know if I have to, have to take them off take them off but you know I just don't have here one one step at a time so let's go to the next one see what we got Alright, if we look at step 20, 
9, and to move my glasses up, uh, it says to connect to the antenna wire, the gray one, which you can see I have done here. And uh, that is done, so really pretty much, basically you just want to, there's a little copper pad there, you put some, uh, tin the uh, copper pad with some solder, and then just hold your wire on there and hold your soldering iron on there, and that's all you need to do. Holds the wire on good. So, alright, next step. Alright, step number 30. This is connect the one piece um, ribbon cable, I guess is what you call it. Uh, five pins, five wires on the LCD display module. And uh, red wire is connected to VCC. You have to notice that, and it is where it's at. Uh, the rest of them go in order, just as they are. And I think they are perfectly happy like they are. <laughs> I think that's going to do that. That was pretty easy to do. I'll show you the back side. See that as well. There's all our solder joints. Nice and clean. Nice and done. So that's that. Thank you.